Tonight's guest was featured on episodes 139, 280, and 281. On those shows, she told us about the dogmen and Sasquatch around her home that her daughter interacts with. Well, since we recorded episode 281, a lot's happened, and that's what she's come back to talk about. Let's not waste any more time. Let's bring her on now. Robin, thanks for coming back. Hi, Vic. Thanks for having me back. Well, it's great having you. Thank you so much for your time. Robin, for the listeners who missed episodes 139, 280, and 281, please tell them about yourself. Okay. My name is Robin, and I live in remote Montana with my daughter, who is now 12 years old. I moved here back in 2007. Prior to that, I lived in the city. The property that I live on is family property. Um, My grandparents bought it and we've had it since I was a little girl. Um, My family's been coming to this property ever since I can remember. And it's always been a getaway for us. It's in the woods and behind my house, there's a river. And I'm a college graduate. I'm a professional. And I live here, like I said, with my daughter. And we've had some pretty unique experiences that have been ongoing since, well, I think since as long as I can remember. But I think that we, my brother and I have both blocked out a lot of what happened when we were kids here. And as things progressed here with both our Sasquatch and Dogman activity, childhood memories for both my brother and I when when he comes have been returning. So I really think that we've had Dogman and Sasquatch on this property probably longer than we've owned the property. To say that you had some unique experiences there is about the biggest understatement you can make. (laughs) You've had some amazing experiences. Yes, we have. We definitely have. And it's a very unique situation because my parents have experienced Sasquatch here. They have not experienced Dogman. But my mother actually was one of the first people to see Sasquatch on the property and didn't tell us, didn't tell me about it and let me think that I I was just, I thought I was going crazy when all this first started happening. We would have very loud bangs and damage to the outside of the house. And I had no idea what was going on. And my mom had had two sightings and it wasn't until it all hit the fan and I confronted her that she admitted that she had had sightings and it's just been ongoing ever since then. They both Sasquatch and Dogman make no, they're, they're not shy. I'll just put it that way. Our activity is daily. I know that people will find that very hard to believe, but it's just our norm now. We all joke that we have this double life. We have this secret life going on. I do have friends who live in the same community that I've confided in and they've come to the property and have also had experiences as well and sightings. And my daughter's friends when they've come to the house have had sightings and I have to make up some little white lie about, well, maybe there was someone walking in the woods and they just cast a very large shadow because they, they're they just not shy. And I, I don't know why they're the way they are here. And, and I, I don't know why they behave the way they do where we have nightly activity and daily activity, but it's just how it is here. And we certainly see Sasquatch a lot more than the dogmen. And I think that that might be because even though we've seen them quite frequently, 
it still is very scary to see them. And it's a little off-putting when you see them, even though they haven't done anything, they've not, they haven't harmed us. They haven't tried to scare us or intimidate us, but just their appearance alone is extremely, it, it, it is, um, it still is very scary for me, at least my daughter sees them and she's not frightened at all. But for me, even though I'm used to this, this has been going on, like I said, since 2012, but just seeing them, it, it's very, they're very, they're very fast. It's, it, it alarms me for a couple of reasons. Number one, even though, like I said, they haven't harmed us, they haven't done anything intimidating, but I have seen them. We have a a very large field and I've seen them moving across the field and it's almost like you can't even see them. They move so fast. It's, it's like you just see this streak. If they're moving slow, that's kind of creepy because the way that they gait isn't smooth. Like when you see the Sasquatch move, their gait is very smooth and very just rhythmic. And these things, when they're on two legs, it looks, even though they're fast and you can tell that they have grace and they are extremely athletic. I, I can't even, I can't stress that enough, their athleticism and just how muscular they are. It, it is like if you took an NFL, like a, a center, they're, they're, so, they're just huge and shredded them out and then gave them the grace of a ballerina and the power of God. I don't even know, probably like the Terminator. That is intimidating because you can just tell by their appearance and by how they move, even though it looks kind of like, to me, it looks awkward. I'm not articulating this well, but they're very, very graceful. Seeing that is just as intimidating as seeing like I'd rather see them streak by than see them gate even when they're on all fours it it is just it's frightening because they're so huge they're so huge and we'll see them moving across our field and they're just huge and the ones that we have seen move across the field do not have a tail I've seen one, or I think it's one or two. I can't, I can't, it's hard to tell if it's the same one. They're the same color. They're very, very dark, dark black, but they're always standing. We have an, an embankment that goes down off of the side of our driveway. And down by the side of our driveway, we have an old outhouse that's been there since the property was developed. And the outhouse is about 10 to 12 feet. And when we see, when I see, there's, there's one that hangs out down there. And it, I've seen it about maybe four or five times when I come, and it's always when I come home at night. Or if I come home and it's kind of dusky from the gym. I'll come home and if I look over, you have to look over there. It's hard to explain, but they're so dark that it's almost like um, if you've ever, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it's this black that's supposed to be the blackest black where it's almost in, have you heard of that? Where it's almost invisible. It's so dark. Oh yeah, I sure have. There is a term for it, but I forgot what the term is. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but there's one and it's like that where it's so black and the hair doesn't have, or the fur 
doesn't have any kind of iridescence to it or shine like a normal animal would or like our hair does. It's almost like it sucks light. It's it's very odd. It, it's really weird. But when I come home, I usually will park my truck there on the driveway by that embankment. And the times that I've parked there and that I've looked, because you get a funny feeling when they're around. It's not like a doom feeling. Early on, I would get this feeling of impending doom. And it was like, oh my God. It it was like something was sucking the life out of you and sucking your soul. It was a horrible, horrible feeling. And I don't know why that feeling changed. I don't know how it changed, but it changed. And now they, they're around and I don't feel that anymore. But it's just like this weird feeling that I get almost like when you have a test or there's something coming up that makes you feel kind of anxious. I get that kind of a feeling. I don't feel like I'm going to get hurt or anything like that, but I get anxiety and I look over to my left and down that embankment and it will be there. And that I can tell has a tail. I can't see like a tail like you would on a German Shepherd or something where it's fluffy, but it's like you can see negative space and make it out if that makes any kind of sense. Because down this embankment, it's really green. And in the winter, it'll just be white. So you can see the negative space there. But when I look down and I can see The eyes are either very, very, um, oh, they're really pretty. They're, They're like an amber or they're a really bright, bright green, like almost, um, almost like a neon, like a neon-y, but not like a yellow, more towards an emerald neon than a yellow neon. But it's like they're backlit. It's the same thing with the Sasquatch. It's like their eyes are backlit like a flashlight. Only there's not beams coming out of their eyes. But it, it, they're so bright. It's like they're backlit. And I'll look down there. And the times that I've seen them and they've made eye contact, it is, um, oh, like I said, I don't feel like I'm going to be attacked. I don't feel like I'm going to have any kind of harm come to me. Um, The best analogy I can use is if you've ever been in the presence of someone that has served in the military and has been uh, like, has had, It is like, um, I have a friend who is a SEAL or was a former SEAL and they get into these, when they talk, when he talks about things, um, sometimes it's like they flip and their energy changes. I don't know if this is making sense, but it's like they go from someone who's a friend all of a sudden to someone that you would not want to mess with. You're not scared of them, but you just, it's like an intimidating presence where you know that there's just no room for joking around or um, being jovial. That That's not them at all. Um, when I've made eye contact with them, I feel like it's something where I feel like I respect them. And I feel like if anything bad ever came physically to my house, I'm glad they're around because I like to think that they would take care of business. They, they are like the business end of, if you think that they're an animal, they're the business end of the animal kingdom. 
And I get the feeling too, when I'm around them, that there's no relax mode. It just seems to me like it's like someone who is highly trained military. That's the best analogy that I can come up with. And I'm sure that there's going to be some derogatory comments, hopefully not. But I remember the first time I came on and you said, if they haven't harmed you, they could if they wanted to, but they haven't harmed you. They haven't harmed your daughter. And I just think that for whatever reason, they're being here. And I'd like to add too, that they seem to cohabitate with the Sasquatch because the Sasquatch make a very distinct banging sound on the side of my house. It sounds the house gets slapped or it's like if you had a closed fist and thumped and I have a log house, so it's really hard to make noise with it and it's a newer build. So it's very well insulated. And that I know is the Sasquatch. They bang. And then the same night we'll hear tapping like a nail on the windows and our windows are hurricane proof windows. And I said this in another, and I think in our first interview that I went outside with a nail, like with a pretty sizable nail and I was banging it with the pointy end. I was hitting the window with it. And my brother was here at the time and he was on the inside and he couldn't hear with the window closed. We were trying to replicate and see what that could be. And you can't replicate it. So I know that that's like a claw and the Sasquatch don't have claws. They have nails like our nails. And when I've seen them, they don't have long nails. Their nails are really short. But we'll hear this tapping too the same night. So I know that they cohabitate here. And it's like you said, I think that they, for whatever reason, they're attracted to this land and they respect us because they haven't destroyed anything lately. And we respect them, you know, every night. I go outside and I thank them for being here and I thank them for letting me see them and for for letting me know that they're here. And I get these feelings of being safe, being protected, and they're not internally generated. We, you know, when you feel... Um, I said this before, when you feel emotion from them, and I know that I sound crazy, I sound like I've lost it, but I haven't. Not at when all. When you feel emotion from them, it is very intense. It is like nothing a human could generate. I love my daughter more than anything, and I cannot generate that feeling. And... I've spoken with a couple of other friends that have experienced this on my property as well. And they articulate it too, where one of my friends has had dogman sightings here. And he said the same thing where it's like, you get this intense feeling of, like I said, being around someone who is highly trained in the military when they're down to business it's like a feeling like not not saying you need to respect me but you just get this feeling of i don't even know how to explain it, it it's like um you just know that you respect this entity or this being and that you wouldn't want to mess with it and anything that came around it's like you feel protected. It's a very strange feeling and very, very different than how I felt originally when all this first started happening. And like I said, I, I can't figure out what caused this energy shift with them. Maybe they test you. And if you are up to snuff or if they figure out that 
you're respectful and that you aren't going to be scared or try to harm them or act in a rash way that they just kind of accept you. But my feelings have changed. And my friend that comes over, it's he's a indigenous and he's never felt that soul sucking awful feeling that I did. He's always felt a reverence when he comes and he does do ceremonies on our land and within his culture it's very much these beings both dogmen and sasquatch are very much respected and seen as positive entities and that it's completely different where it's a blessing and that you need to show respect and that you need to honor them so we do Oh, I'd say about once a month, he'll come over and we'll do a ceremony with my daughter and show them both respect and do tobacco offerings, which I do not recommend unless you know what you're doing. I would not do that because I think that the dogmen are really attracted to it. And if it sounds weird, but if you don't, offer in the right way and if you don't have I think the level of respect oh, I don't know if I'm making sense but if if you don't do it with the right intent and if you don't have the strength and the reverence for them you get the feeling like it's almost insulting I had someone else come out who did a ceremony this was before I met my friend who's Ojibwa. And this guy came out and he did a ceremony. I didn't really tell him too much about what was going on, but it was very clear. It, well, number one, it caused a big disruption with our, with I think everything here got mad because this guy was was kind of like a making light of it and even though he was doing a ceremony you could just tell that he wasn't um it wasn't coming from the heart it was coming from a place of ego and he disrupted everything like for a couple months after he left it was like i was on the you know what list with everything here. And it was just not fun. I felt like I did something bad and we didn't have harmony here for a little while. But then when my other friends started coming, it was just a different thing. So I think that by doing things like that, that maybe that's what keeps the peace here and keeps us in a harmonious kind of balance with everything because they know that I I truly believe that they, and I know this, that they can see how people are. They're observers. And if people don't think that they're intelligent, that the dogmen are not intelligent and that they are not, that they don't have a culture or have, if they think that they're just like a dog or like a cow or another animal where they don't have a culture and they don't have intelligence and like families, they're getting it wrong. I think that they have a very sophisticated um, structure within them. And I think that they are very sophisticated thinkers. And and I know this sounds crazy, but they do have, I, I guess some people call it like a woo-woo side of things, but they do have telepathic abilities and I've experienced it. My daughter has experienced it. My brother has experienced it. And I've had a couple of friends that have come here that have experienced the telepathy. And to get back to my point, I know that they can understand you maybe better than we understand ourselves, but they can sense intent. And even if you take the telepathic component out, if you don't believe in that, that's fine. But if you take that out, if you think about how animals, 
if you think that they're just animals, if you think about how animals can judge character, like a dog, people say, if your dog likes someone, then they're good. That's how, if you just think that they're animals, that's how they are. I think that they can judge character. And I think that, and not to be disparaging, not to say that people that have bad encounters aren't good people. I don't believe that at all. I think that these creatures are just like people where there are good and there are bad, and then there are just evil. I truly believe that. And we're just lucky enough that we've got, I think, nice ones here. If you want to call them nice or however you want to label them, we have respectful dogmen on our property where they they respect us and there's a mutual respect. But I think that they just know. I've had people come over to the house where, and it sounds crazy, where immediately um, you you get this feeling like they're not welcome on the property. And I, I completely get that that sounds crazy, but you can feel it when it's like when you live with someone long enough, like if you're married, you can feel when your spouse is ticked off. That's how it is here. I mean, we've been dealing with this and having pretty much something's happening daily here since 2012. So it is like having a I guess other family members or other living with someone else because you you can feel when things are off. But I haven't had any negative experiences. Like I said, it's just has been this feeling of like I have respect for the dogmen and I do see them pretty not as often as a Sasquatch, like I said, but fairly often. And to me, they look like a wolf. There's one that looks like, there's one that is a little scarier. And I'm wondering if this is the one that doesn't have a tail, because I know that the ones with the tail do look like a wolf. They look like, I can't remember which, back when we did my first interview, I know that I had the classification because I was so obsessed with figuring out what they were. And it's the one that looks like a wolf. It looks like a timber wolf, only huge. And it's beautiful. I mean, when I see it, I, I don't feel scared. I don't feel like how I would if I saw a normal wolf. It's not that kind of a feeling. It's very much like um, like I said, I just feel respect. And I know that <laughs> like when you have a really strict teacher and you don't goof around, that's how I feel. I, ha- I have to be emotionally around these things. But that one is just beautiful. And it's like the negative space black. And the eyes either look very, very yellow or very, very green and, and backlit. And the the mouth, the teeth are like, uh, mm, they're not, they're, even though they have a, a mouth, like a snout, like a wolf, the teeth are all pointy. It's not like, like a dog where they have the smaller teeth and then they have their canines. It's all pointy. Um, the lips can close where you don't see the teeth, but the teeth, when they open their mouth or kind of like, it's almost like they kind of, it's not a smirk, but it looks like they're smiling. It sounds crazy, but it looks like they're smiling and you can see their teeth and it's like little needles, not, um, I, I'm not explaining this very well, but It's not like a dog, how a dog's canine goes down and it's almost like a rounded point. These are like needly points where they look very sharp and it almost looks like, like if they bit their tongue, it would be a problem. 
You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's like really sharp teeth. It's not like, um, they're just not rounded at all. There's nothing soft in their mouth. Um, I see that one. And then the other one, and I think that this might be the one that doesn't have a tail, but it looks scarier. Um, that one looks like, like a werewolf. I mean, it just looks, I I don't like seeing it. Um, and even though I haven't been hurt, my daughter hasn't been hurt. My dog hasn't been hurt. I have cats. My cats haven't been hurt. I don't like seeing it at all because it frightens me. It doesn't have all of the fur that like the ones that I see that are by the outhouse have fur. It's not hair. This thing looks like it has hair. I don't know if people can get a picture of this, but it's like it has hair and it's like, maybe like between it's not short hair. It's like kind of like about four inches hair and the ears are kind of by the side of the head. They're not on top. Like the ones that look like a timber wolf look like a wolf. I think they're beautiful. They're still intimidating, but they're beautiful. This thing just looks like, and I, I, like I said, they haven't hurt us, but it almost looks like something that came from hell. I mean, it is just scary and I don't like seeing it. It's looked in the window before and it, like if, if I ever wanted to like die on the spot from, from feeling like I wish I never saw this thing and uh, that that's the closest I've ever came to just wanting to, um, I guess not exist because it was so frightening to me. It was so fundamentally frightening to me. I don't feel like it's going to hurt us. I don't understand how it can look so different from the others. And I know that they must be in the same group because they all are here. But that thing is just scary. It is just scary. You can see more skin on it. It doesn't look like it has mange or anything like that. It just looks like it has like short, like four, four inch hair maybe. And it looks groomed. I mean, it doesn't look matted or anything like that, but it just, it looks like a, like how someone would describe a werewolf to be. And you can see skin. It has like a grayish black skin and it doesn't look oily or anything like that, but you can just see it and it has a chest like a man like with this i can see more of the body structure and it has a chest of a like what you would imagine like a really ripped out bodybuilder to have where you can see a chest like pecs and abs and everything and then like at the hips it just it changes into like a canine but it does have like the raccoony paws, not paws, but like hands, but it's like a raccoon. It's, it's not like a man hand or like a Sasquatch hand. It's like a raccoony hand where it looks like, like when you see a raccoon's hand, you can see that it has more of like a, like it looks rough. It doesn't look like skin like our skin. It looks like a different type of texture and it has got like almost like talons, the claws on the end of it. It's not nails. It's a claw. Like how, when we would grow our nails out, if you turn your nail upside down, it's kind of hollow. This is like a, 
not even like a dog claw. It's like a, ugh, kind of like a, like a bird talon almost. It's so, or like in, in the movie Jurassic Park, the Velociraptor claw. That's kind of what that thing looks like. And we, ugh, I, I, I think I sent you pictures of the claw marks on the side of our house. And on the garage door, and I'm 99.9% sure that the dog men did all that damage. But uh, like seeing that thing, my brother hasn't seen it. My daughter has seen it and she does, she's not scared, which just baffles me that that doesn't scare her. But she, like when I talked to her about it, she actually told me and then it made me it made me feel bad. She said, you can't judge something by how they look. It's how they make you feel, which is very wise and very sweet. But I think maybe being an adult, it has, maybe it's jaded me or I don't know, but I, I just, it's scary to me. And maybe that's why I don't see that as often as I see the other kind. But I just don't know how, have you heard of people where they have these two, they must be two different types, but they're both here. Oh, sure. Yeah. I've heard about eyewitnesses having more than two types on their property. Wow. That's the thing, Vic, and why I'm so glad that you have your show and why you have a resource for people like us because you feel like you're crazy. I felt like I can't be seeing this because this is here. And how can I have these two things here? And I kind of felt the same thing when we had Sasquatch and suddenly we're seeing dogmen. I thought, how can all these things be here? Because you really feel, and I am so, and I'm sure other eyewitnesses are just as appreciative of you because you do feel isolated, alone, and you feel like you are crazy. And unlike some of your eyewitnesses, I'm very fortunate because my family has seen it. My brother's seen it. And I have friends that I trust that have come and that have seen all this activity too. So I know that I'm not crazy, but I, I really feel for some of your eyewitnesses where they've witnessed it alone, or it's been like, a one-time sighting and you, you feel like you're crazy and I've seen them a lot. And I still feel like sometimes like I'm crazy with having all this going on here that they really do seem to get along very well because we'll hear thumps on the side of the house and then taps. And I know that it's not the Sasquatch tapping. So I know that they're together because the thump and the tap are not that far apart. So it's not like they're, they have like, well, tonight's your night. You know what I mean? Oh, sure. No, I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Normally they mix like oil and water, but there are cases where they do work together. They do come together and they do seem to have amicable relationships where they get along fine. Apparently it's hard to understand, but sometimes that's how it is. If you've had a Dogman encounter and would like to talk with me about it, whether in private or on the show, please go to dogmanencounters.com and submit a report. If you've had a Sasquatch sighting and would like to be a guest on one of my two Bigfoot shows, please go to mybigfootsighting.com and let me know. You've had a lot of experiences since you were on last time on episode 281. Can you share some of these most recent experiences with us? Sure. We've Well, I have had quite a few other experiences where we have one that that I think is just really unusual. We have this little kitten that I was outside and I live, like I said, I'm, I'm rural. And unless someone dumps off kittens, there's no way that a kitten would suddenly appear at my property. And I was outside and I heard and saw this tiny, tiny little kitten. He was probably eight or nine weeks old, not old at all, and brought him in. I just figured that somebody had dumped him off. So I brought him in 
inside and took him to the vet and all that. And this was like, after I'd had him for about a week, he got scared of our dog and got outside and I couldn't find him. And I felt horrible, but we had a little bit of snow on the ground so I could track him. And there's an island on our property and it's maybe a quarter of a mile from my home, from my house house. So I was out walking and I was following these tracks and I went down and down where our island is, it's very, very wooded. We have a very large field. And then if you leave my house, go out the front door and then walk to the field to the left is just woods and there's a small embankment and then there's a river. And if you follow along the river, you'll get to this island. Well, when you go down the embankment, you go to the right and you're following the river and then it gets brambly and it gets, there's a lot of fallen trees. The Sasquatch have knocked down a ton of trees. And if you've ever seen what the Sasquatch do to trees, how they kind of bend them and weave them where it looks like, it looks like a basket. The trees are just so interwoven and intertwined that we call it kind of like their keep out sign. But I went in there because I wanted to get this kitten. So I went in there and all of a sudden I, I got that kind of like that feeling. And I thought, I feel mean thinking this, but I thought, I hope they didn't eat the kitten. I hope that the kitten's okay. And I saw not that real scary one, but like the negative space again on the island, kind of in in the tree line, but it's all in kind of in the trees, but it was like, recessed back where there's more trees and it's not so like brambly and deadfall where it's actual living trees. There was something back in there and I know it wasn't a Sasquatch because I could see ears and it was so massive. And I just knew that it wasn't, it wasn't a dog. It wasn't a bear. I mean, it was, it was that negative black space thing again. And then you see the eyes and it was like bright green eyes and just big, just big, big eyes. And they're like almost, if you ever look at a Husky's eyes, how they're kind of almond shaped and squinty, that's kind of how these eyes are shaped. They're not round. Like a Sasquatch's eyes are more round these are more almondy shaped. And I remember when I came on, it was the second interview that we did. And I was telling you, you asked me if anything new had happened. And I said, when I was out walking on the, along the field, my dog was kind of, this was when I had another dog. He was kind of looking over to the left on the tree line. And I saw these bright green eyes that were backlit And they looked real almondy shaped. That's exactly what this was. And I think it might have been the same one, but it was back in there. And I thought, oh, you know, I I didn't feel like I was going to be attacked or anything like that, but I felt, I felt scared. I felt, um, it's very strange, but I felt scared. And then I felt like really conflicted and bad for feeling scared because I felt like by feeling scared, it was like, um, this is going to sound dumb, but like I was, I might hurt their feelings because I feel scared because I'm seeing them again. So I, I had just like these weird feelings inside but that got overridden because I really wanted to find this kitten and I followed the tracks and I just kept following the tracks and just kind of ignored it. And then God, like the feeling 
the the feeling just got to me and as, as much as i wanted to to get this little kitten um the feeling was so uncomfortable for me that i just i i backed out i i just left and um we did get the kitten back two days later the kitten came back so i felt like mm, that made me feel even worse for feeling scared because i felt at the time in my head i was thinking if you ate that kitten or if anything happened to that kitten i will like i will come and get you because that was to me would have been just such a violation and disrespectful to me and just horrible but we did get the kitten back a couple of days later and i kept following his tracks he kept going back onto that island and then down by the outhouse which i thought was really weird because every time i see the dogmen that look like a timber wolf they're down by this outhouse and you know the other one was down by that island so you know it was just really odd to me cuz it was this kitten was going where these things hang out but he wasn't harmed when i finally got him back in he was hungry but he wasn't any worse for wear which i actually thanked them for taking care of him whoever took care of him and didn't harm him because it was pretty cold it was in the middle of winter and he was just none the worse for wear but i just thought that was so interesting i guess that that's where he was choosing to go instead of under my back porch which would be warmer but that's where he was hanging out another time i was out in the yard and in the field and i got that feeling again and i looked over to my left along the tree line and kind of around the same spot where i saw the eyes before there was something there and it was it was like you know how um when people are in a plank and they kind of can do that push up where they're half down and half up it wasn't fully laying flat but it wasn't on all fours like a dog position i guess it was like it was in a it looked like it was in a half like with its legs like on all fours but not fully standing up on all fours if that makes any sense at all it was like it was half crouched on all fours in there and even though I've got a great Dane that's massive. Just massive. I'm 5'10 and he comes up to my armpit his head. And even though this thing was half crouched, it was about as big as my dog. It was just it was huge. It wasn't doing anything. It just was sitting there observing. And it, you know, it it's like I said, I didn't get this feeling like I did when I went down to the island of complete like i shouldn't be there but it was just um it it's not like when the sasquatch are around and you feel good you don't feel bad either you just don't feel um it, it's like being around a really strict teacher or someone that that is constantly demanding respect where you feel like you can't screw up around them or be disrespectful or anything it's that kind of a feeling but i i got that feeling and again with the green eyes and i just turned around and went back in the house and that's pretty much what i do when i see them i i just i don't run but i very briskly go to my house because i even though i i don't think they're going to hurt me 
I don't like that feeling of being out in the open when they're around. When the Sasquatch are around, I can be outside and I don't feel that way at all. I feel happy and, and pleasant. I'm, I like knowing they're around. With these things, um, I hate to say it, but I, I wish that they weren't. Even though they haven't hurt us, I just wish that they weren't because it is, it's one of those things where I feel like I've got like an unpredictable, uh, like an unpredictable tiger walking around and you just try to make the best of it and you try not to, it's, it's like toying around. Um, sometimes I don't feel that way. Sometimes I feel comfortable with it but sometimes I just feel that way and it you know you you just I just feel like I I just wish that they weren't around sometimes which is like most of the time if I admit it but you I just try to make the best of having them here because like I said I mean my daughter isn't afraid of them and they haven't hurt us but it makes you wonder the other time that I've seen them is coming home from the gym and it was kind of dusk and I parked, I was going to go out later. So I parked on my driveway and I tried to park a little bit further down so that I wasn't parallel to the outhouse, but I got out of my car and I turned and looked and there was one right there. And this one was that outhouse. My brother and I measured it and it's 12 feet tall at the peak. It, it's like a, like a, like the outhouses that you see on little house on the prairie where they have kind of a peaked roof and it has a little, almost, it looks like a stove pipe coming out of it. And the stove pipe is about six inches taller than the outhouse. The peak of the outhouse is 12 feet. My brother and I measured it. And this thing was as tall as that stovepipe thing coming out. So it was really, really big. And this one was like the, the, the wolf looking ones. And it was just standing there. And just like it does, that's why I think it's the same one. Because it just likes to stand there. And I don't know. It's so weird, but I don't know if they just track our patterns that well, that they know when we're coming back or if they see my vehicle coming down the road and like get to that spot where I'll see it. But it, it clearly wants to be seen. It it wants me to know that it's there and be seen. And, um, but like I said, with, with this one, I don't feel as scared. I I don't feel as frightened with this particular one. I guess with the outhouse dog myth, because it, it just stands there and it's like, it just watches and it, it's, it kind of smiles. It, It doesn't smirk or I've heard people describe it describe them as smirking. It doesn't smirk. It's like it's trying to be pleasant and convey like a human emotion. It sounds nuts, but it it's trying it it's almost like it's trying not it's trying to like like I said convey that I shouldn't be afraid or maybe that's just how I'm interpreting it, but I don't feel when I see this one, it is still not a great thing, but compared to the other one and compared to some of the other experiences I've had, like being on that Island and having that feeling and just feeling intimidated. I don't feel intimidated per se. I don't feel like I do with the Sasquatch where I want to be around it a lot, but I don't feel I don't feel in- terribly anxious. Um, I still walk to my house, into the house really 
quick. But I, I don't know, Vic. I, I feel like it is trying to put me more at ease, if that makes any sense at all. I know I sound nuts, but that's how I feel when I see it because of its its actions. It's down far enough where it's down in that embankment where if it stands up fully erect, it can still see me. I can see it. We're almost at eye level with each other. So it's not an intimidating posturing where if we were on level ground, I would feel like, I think I would wet my pants if we were on level ground and I saw this thing. So it's almost like it's trying to balance it out. You know what I mean? Oh, of course. No, I totally understand what you're saying. And I can't say I'd blame you if you did wet your pants, if it was on the same level ground as you and you had to crane your neck to look up. Now I get it. We're going to stop tonight's show right here, but don't worry. Robin's got a lot more to share in part two. But before we get out of here, don't forget to check out tonight's new episode of my Bigfoot sighting. Tonight's episode is titled, That's Where Sasquatch Lives. I'll put a link for it in the description for tonight's show. Thanks as always so much for listening. Have a great night.